بعد هو أصلي على رسول الكريم فقال أز وجل هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله وكفى بالله شهيدا رب شح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وهل الأقدة من لساني يفكه قولي اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا الطباء وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابا آمين يا رب Recently, there's been a lot of talk about, uh, you know, khuruj and talking against Muslim leaders and so on and so forth. So I just want to make certain things clear. I really feel that, you know, why are we talking about this now? Because people are beginning to criticize the Saudi government. And because people are beginning to criticize the Saudi government, uh, people have a problem. Some people have a problem that... Somebody would stand up and say, oh, Saudi Arabia shouldn't be having Halloween. But even before going to that, right, let me make certain points from the early Islam clear. Number one, these Muslim rulers that are the rulers of the Muslims today, they're not Khulafa. We have no allegiance to them. We have no bayah to them because the way you become a leader of Muslims in the Muslim Ummah taught to us by the Quran and the Sunnah is by the Khalifa taking bayah. Okay? And if the Khalifa and that bayah should be a bayah that is la bay'un fi jabr. This is the fatwa of Imam Malik. There's no bayah on jabr. There's no, comp- there's no uh, compulsion to, that you take bayah with uh, or if people are forced to take bayah with someone then that counts or not. We can discuss that because there is another uh, opinion on this. But the main point is this, is that people are trying to make it look like that it is sinful to criticize secular Muslim rulers. And there's nothing farther from the truth from this. I mean, you can look our entire Islamic history. Almost every major scholar of Islam has been put in jail. You take, for example, uh, Imam Abu Hanifa was put in jail twice. Do you know why he was put in jail? He was put in jail because he supported uh, Nafsu Zakiya, Muhammad bin Abdullah, from the family of the Prophet وسلم, to rebel against the Umayyad Empire. Do you know that Hassan, uh, Hussein radiallahu anh, and the people that were with him, that rebelled, this is the grandchild of the Prophet وسلم, Hussein, who rebelled against the Umayyads. Okay? He didn't know the deen. What are you talking about? Then Abdullah, uh, Abdullah bin Zubair radiallahu anh, the grandchild of Abu Bakr, the firstborn male born in Medina, rebelled against who? The Umayyad Empire at that time. So you're going to tell me, forget about, and these were Khulafa who had bay'ah, even though they didn't represent the true Islam at the political level anymore. They changed that. The rest of Islam was according to the Sharia, the economic, social uh, aspects, but just the political that the kingship started uh, instead of the, uh, the, the system of Khilafah. So the system of Khilafah changed from system of Khilafah as the Prophet had foretold from Khilafah to Malukiya. So kingship started and these kings, they were cruel. As the Prophet himself said, Mulkan Adan, they were Cruel kings. There's another narration the Prophet said that it would be a mercy because there was some good in it too. It would be mercy compared to what would come after, which is Mulkan Jabriyan, which is what we're living in today. Imperialism and colonialism. Now, those Muslim rulers that were the kings of the Muslims who enforced the Sharia and lived according to the Sharia, the, re, the, uh, the how you dealt with them, okay, and what was the ima- opinion of Imam Abu Hanifa? Imam Abu Hanifa felt and said and established in his life he, when he saw Nafsu Zakiya, Muhammad bin Abdullah from the children of the Prophet Wasallam, that when he was defeated and the day he was fighting, he said this battle today is like the battle of Badr against the Umayyad Empire. Okay, when they got defeated and when Nafsu Zakiya got killed, then he said, after that, he gave his fatwa that only rebel against your leaders if you feel you have enough power to actually rebel against them. If you don't have enough power to rebel against them, it will cause fitna. It will cause fasad. It will hurt the general da'wah and the general situation. And the you don't want to create a situation of fawda, anarchy in society. You don't want to do that. So when you do stand up with a jama'ah, when you do establish the deen, 
Okay, here's the other aspect, which is very important, which is that these people want to tell you don't criticize the leaders because if you criticize the leaders, it becomes equal to becoming khuruj, which is rebellion against the uh, leaders, right? Which they see as anti-Islam, even though these leaders are doing everything, everything in their power to go against the Sharia, which is ma'asiyah uh, uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is what Quran calls ta'ghut. These are the systems, false systems that have been put in place to enforce the laws of something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ You have to deny ta'ghut. You have to deny those forces that rebel against Allah and then believe in Allah. Quran says this in the ayah right after Ayatul Kursi. قَدْ تَبَيَّنُ لَا إِكْرَهَ فِي الدِّينَ There's no compulsion in the deen. قَدْ تَبَيَّنُ رُشْدُ مِنَ الْغَيِّ The truth has been made clear from falsehood. وَمَنْ يَكْفُرْ بِالطَّاغُوتِ وَيُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ Whoever does kufr of ta'ghut, you, every prophet came and rebelled against the leaders of their community, against the hukam of their community. What are you talking about? Being on the manhaj of the prophet. The manhaj of the prophet is to go against the status quo. That's the manhaj of the prophet. Look at all the great... Shaykh Abdul Qadir Jalani rahmatullahi spent his entire life against what? Against the leaders. Mujad al Sani rahmatullahi against the leaders. Shaulila Muhaddas Delvi rahmatullahi against the leaders. Shaykh al Islam, Mahmoud al Hassan rahmatullahi fighting against the British, right? Fighting against those who were fighting with the British. Okay? Those people that want to stop you from criticizing Muslim leaders have a history of siding with those who, who fought against the Khilafah, who fought against, who fought against Muslims and the ulama of the Muslims of that time on the side of the British against the Muslims. Those are the people that are giving you these teachings. That you should not speak out against Muslim leaders. They should not rebel against Muslim leaders. These, they're Muslims. That's fine. But they're Muslims who are enforcing laws that are other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ Whoever doesn't rule according to the book of Allah. فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ They're the real oppressors. وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ And who doesn't rule according to the book of Allah. فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ These are the evildoers. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the same uh, part of the Quran, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ And whoever doesn't rule according to the book of Allah, فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَافِرُونَ They're the disbelievers. Meaning disbelievers, not as in becoming kafir, but they're the un ingrateful ones. They're, this is du kufr, dun al-kufr. Okay? These people who stand up, because this is the last remnants of this type of Islam that is, you can say, left at least for now, even though I don't want to go into the future of this uh, type of sect. But this sect that is so strong on Quran and Sunnah and Quran and Sunnah and Quran and Sunnah, this sect that says Quran and Sunnah will tell you don't stand up against Muslim leaders. Well, number one, the ulama, the, the, the Muslim leaders of the past are not like the Muslim leaders of today. Because the Muslim leaders of today are secular. They're secular, they're secular, they have secular education. Hardly any of them can read Fatiha and Quran properly. And the Muslim leaders of the past, they knew the Sharia. And they enforced the Sharia. They had palaces and women and all that. Used to drink alcohol and all that. They did many things against the Sharia also. Which Iqbal calls that they left a dark stain on the history of Muslims, these, these kings. The stain of imperialism that Muslims left. This is what our kings did. But rebelling against them, that was a question that was, uh, that was, could be debated depending upon the situation. Sometimes ulama rebelled against them. Imam Ahmad bin Hanbal, rahmatullahi he rebelled against them. Okay. Imam Abu Hanifa rebelled against them. Imam Malik, a fatwa against them. They didn't like Imam Shafi'i. I mean, you can go on and on giving names of ulama that stood up against the hukam of their time. <coughs> Abu Hassan Shadri, rahmatullah standing up against the hukam of his time. So many great leaders they, uh, of, of the ulama and the shayukh, they stood up against the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the kufr of that time or the, the, the sickness of that time, against the leaders of that time. 
because the most qa'im tawheed and and adl shahid allah annahu la ilaha illahu allah bears witness there's no divine but him shahid allah annahu la ilaha illahu wal malaikatu wa ulul ilm qa'im bil qis they're upon justice and justice means you you know the, the biggest jihad is qawlul haqq in the sultan al jair the saying the truthful word uh, to to the uh, to the uh, cruel leader to the, it, say it nicely but say it man ra'a minkum munkaran falyayru bihi yadi whoever sees something wrong let him change it with his hands Whoever sees something wrong, let him at least change it with his tongue. And man ra'a minkum munkaran falyayru falbiqalbi. Let him know that it's wrong, feel that it's bad in his heart at least. ذلك أضعف الإيمان. This is the lowest level of iman. So when you will tell people, hush, don't speak against the leader. Hush, don't speak against these secular dajali leaders. Hush! Don't speak against these leaders. Don't speak against these leaders that want to bring homosexuality into Muslim countries. Don't uh, don't speak against these leaders that want to bring riba into the Muslim countries. Don't speak against these uh, Muslim leaders that want pornography and secular thought and atheism and liberalism in the Muslim countries. Don't speak against them. And you're giving the verdict based upon Islam for that. The lowest is you feel that it is wrong. And that will go away when you tell people and teach people, don't even say anything against them. Yo, you're going to be wrong. Let those people have a free, free a blank check to do whatever they want. And you should say nothing against them. And, if, and I really fear, feel, because when I saw this whole thing happening, I felt this is where everything is going to go. You know, the one part of the deen that the that they're going to carry now and they're going to try to enforce upon the people is you can't say anything against the kings. And so all of Arabia becomes secular and more secular and more secular. At the same time, the only political use of religion that or the, the political use of Islam they make is hush when it comes to the kings. Hush when it comes to the uh, leaders of the Muslims. Hush, don't say anything against them. Do dua, do dua, have good sincerity and dua. Yes, you could do that. But you have to, have to, in this time and age where fitnas are flooding into the Muslim world, where Mecca and Medina are changing, where everything is, is, is going backward, and you want to tell Muslims, hush, don't speak against the Muslim leaders? Are you like, have you lost your mind? Have you lost your mind? You know, speaking against the Muslim leaders is, in my opinion, is fard is wajib in these days. You have to, because you have to make clear that these people do not represent Islam. They represent secular thought. They don't re- represent religious thought. And I can go on and on. I can give a list of more than maybe 500 scholars that were imprisoned or hurt or killed by Muslim leaders in the, in the time where Muslims were better. <coughs> what to speak of today? If... If you think that uh, if the Sahaba were here today, they wouldn't stand up against the Muslim leaders? They wouldn't say anything to the Muslim leaders? Have you have you lost your... Uh, you, you haven't studied history if you feel that way. You think Hussein radiallahu anh, he would just accept things? When, when they said to Abu Bakr, we will not give zakat. Abu Bakr said, Are you going to change the deen while I'm alive? Are you going to change the deen while I'm alive? And come to the other side of the same issue, which is the establishment of Khilafah. These same people that will tell you, don't speak against the, uh, the Mus- secular Muslim leaders, they will also tell you what? Don't talk about Khilafah. Rather, I would invite them to talk about Khilafah. What I mean by that is, is that because there's a contradiction. Is establishing khilafah a fard upon Muslims as a Muslim ummah? Well, how are you going to do that? You're going to do that in Muslim lands or non-Muslim lands? You're going to do that in Muslim lands. Well, how are you going to establish khilafah in Muslim lands without speaking against the leaders? Without speaking against the system? Without speaking against the status quo? Without trying to influence the status quo? If Prophet Muhammad وسلم, could not bring change, وسلم, Rahmatul lil alameen could not bring change without shedding blood, you think your mere advice and da'wah will change the system? 
This is not how things are done. You know, revolutions are brought. The American Revolution came, the French Revolution came, the Chinese Revolution came, the Russian, the Bolshevik Revolution came. So many revolutions come. Why? Because they feel what was there before was tyranny and they want to bring justice. So why Muslims don't have a right to establish uh, Khilafah? These people who tell us, hush, don't speak against Muslim leaders, they want us to say, they want us to say, hush, don't bring Khilafah. Which the Prophet told us that in the end times, this is what we have to look forward to. So this is all interconnected with end times in this way. Because the Prophet told us in the end times, the Khilafah would come back. These people, they want these evil rulers, evil because Quran says, وَمَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأُولَيْكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ Those who don't rule according to the book of Allah, they're evil doers. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has described in Quran, فَعْزَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ Know that there is a war of Allah and His Messenger against riba. Then if can you imagine that a Muslim ruler establishing an economic system in his country at an expense of war against Allah and His Messenger, he's establishing this, he's enforcing this, taking greater and greater loans from the World Bank, from the IMF, Right? Taking greater, greater loans. And then you're told, hush, don't speak against the Muslim leader, even if he's taking riba. Don't call for an Islamic system. This is where it comes down to. It comes down to saying, and it comes down to telling people, don't talk about khilafah. Hush, against Muslim leaders. Don't talk about khilafah. Don't talk about having a system where Muslims can live the way of life that they want to live. This is what the, the the these you know this is what the many of the gen, this generation of scholars this is what they want this is what they're, they're they make tawhid they make tawhid the center of their da'wah yet what imam ibn taymiyyah called tawhid talabi that tawhid that is established for people to see this is what tawhid looks like they don't want to they don't want you to go there they don't want you to bring back the khilafah they don't want you to establish the nur of tawhid on earth they don't want you to speak against the, the things that lead to kufr and ilhad. They don't want you to speak against those leaders that are okay with Halloween and dancing parties uh, in their country. They don't want you to speak against leaders that bring, bring and establish riba in their country. What type of scholars are these? What type of scholar is it in this day and age, a true scholar? What type of true scholar is it that does not stand up against the wrongs of that society and the wrongs in the Muslim society. What, what's left? That's like having idols around the Kaaba and saying we believe in one Allah, but don't talk about the idols. You're doing the exact same thing. You're doing the exact same thing. You want the kufr to be there as long as you can talk about tawhid. That's called secularism. That is what secularism is, that everything's okay. You talk about your tawhid, let them do their kufr. Let the idols be around the Kaaba. That's secularism. That's like, we'll tolerate, you know, and this is the problem, that these people are in the name of, of you know, don't, re and, and imagine, right, with all the history of Muslim scholars rebelling against their leaders, there's these people now standing up saying, and forcing people to say that I don't believe in rebelling against Muslim leaders. Every Muslim who is a true Muslim in his heart will feel that what the Muslim leaders are doing is wrong. Every Muslim who is a true Muslim will feel that it's wrong when one Muslim country fights against another Muslim country. When Saudi Arabia kills people of Yemen, that's wrong. When Muslims of one country kill another uh, group of uh, Muslims in another country, Muslims should feel that's wrong. And those rulers that are allowing such things are also on the wrong. And they should speak against that. And they should speak against the fact that we don't have... Why are these... Who are the biggest... You can say a uh, problem for the Muslim world in establishing Khilaf, it's the Muslim leaders. It's the Muslim leaders. Who, are, who is br br bringing all this brainwashing into the Muslim lands? The Muslim leaders. So, uh, Muhammad bin Salman, he may be Muslim, but he's a secular Muslim. He doesn't believe in enforcing in religious laws. He doesn't believe in orthodoxies. He doesn't believe in an Islam of the first three generations. He, did, he said that let's do away with hadith. That's what Sal Muhammad bin Salman said. That is the man that you're defending? That's the man you're defending. 
right? That don't speak out against these leaders. Shame on any person who sits on the podium of the Prophet and tells people or speaks on behalf of Islam and tells people don't speak out against Muslim leaders. Shame on such people. Because, you know, they want to kill your religious sensitivities. They want to kill your religious sensitivities. They want to kill the religious sensitivities of the Muslims in the Muslim lands. As long as you're slaves and don't speak out against your masters, you know, do what you want. <coughs> Where's the very essence of prophethood? The very essence of tawhid is to go against the status quo and to establish justice. To est why, did, why did Allah destroy the people of Lut? Because of the injustice that they were doing. Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala destroy the people of Salih? The people, the, 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 all these pro, the people that denied the messengers because of some moral condition that they had. Why Allah destroyed Fir'aun? Why is uh, the story of Musa and Fir'aun the most mentioned uh, event in the Quran? You're either with Ali Fir'aun or you're with Ali Muhammad وسلم, And Ali Muhammad, the family of Muhammad stood up against the kings of their time. And the Mahdi, Muhammad bin Abdullah, will also stand up against the kings of his time. Will stand up against the status quo of his time. So if you are a type of Muslim who is okay with the status quo, is okay with secularism, is okay with, no, hush, don't say anything against Muslim leaders, you'll be on one side. Only those Muslims who are willing to stand up against the status quo will be on the, on the rightful side. They will be they will be the people who will do what Sutul Asr, which is the least condition of success according to the Quran. They enjoin one another to truth. You can't stop a Muslim from speaking the truth. Not telling people, hush, don't say anything against Muslim leaders. What nonsense is this? Hush. Don't say anything against Muslim leaders because if you start saying something against Muslim leaders, what will be the natural result of that? You'll start talking about Khilafah. So whenever Muslims come on top, right? When Muslims come on top, when people say, oh, we want Muslims to be our leaders, then something is always done to remove them. Right? And so I, I don't want to go more into this. But shame on Muslims who say, who talk about the subject of Kharuj as if it is relevant today. The subject of Kharuj is not relevant in this, in this context because none of the Muslim leaders have take bayah, establish sharia, establish salah. They're not in the Jummah khutbas. They're not in the five-time prayers. They're not, even, they're not even concerned if people are coming to the masjid or not. They're not... They're, you know, Imam Nawi... Uh, Imam Ghazali, Imam Nawi, they've been very clear about these things. Very clear. And this is the thing I want to tell you. Right? They'll say Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah. And yet, they will, they will ignore all the people of Quran and Sunnah who stood up against the hukam. The people of Quran and Sunnah who stood up against the, the leadership uh, and against the status quo of their time when it was the right thing to do. And this was when there were Muslim kings. <coughs> and now it's, uh, don't speak against the, uh, the, the kings, even if they put 20, 30,000 people in prison, even if they put 60,000 Muslims in prison. Shame on such people, is all I got to say. Okay, assalamu alaikum. And I wanted to end with this. Imam Hanifa's fatwa, is the most logical fatwa in this issue. Which is that, until you don't have power, don't rebel, but organize. When you have power to rebel against Muslim leaders who are not establishing the Sharia, you should establish Sharia. As long as you have power. If Allah gives you power, if Allah organizes you enough, this is what the Prophet did. In Mecca, he didn't have power. In Mecca, the Prophet didn't have power. He didn't drop even one idol. He waited. He bought time. He went through persecution. 
Isbiru ya ala Yasir. O people of Yasir, family of Yasir, have patience. Where was the Jalal of Umar and Hamza in Mecca? No, kufu aidiyakum, keep your hands tied. But when the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Muhammad authority and power through his da'wah, from the street da'wahs of Mecca to organizing the Muslims in Medina, and then establishing inna, inna fatahna laka fatham mubina or idha ja'a nasrullahi wal fath when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Prophet Muhammad control back to Mecca, the capital of Arabia, and he destroyed all the idols there. When that happened, he, he established, he threw away all the idols when he had power. So it's not the ballot and it's not the bullet. These two methods don't work. But there's a third method, which I'll talk about another time. A revolutionary process. A grassroots movement. This is what a jama'ah does. A grassroots movement. Not the ballot. You won't be able to bring Islam through the ballot. Muslims have been trying that forever. And you won't bring Islam through the bullet. The Muslims have been trying that forever. Right? But there's a third method that is according to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, which Dr. Israel has talked about in detail. But right now, the concern of the Muslims is protecting themselves from the fitna and the onslaught of the fitnas that's about to come. And Muslims should speak against these secular Muslims who are going to blindsight Muslims from these fitnas that are going to be coming into the Muslim world. If you just say, hush, don't speak against the, the leaders, right? Hush over every issue that they do wrong because they're Muslim leaders. And you're using Quran and Sunnah to establish the fact they're Muslim leaders. I would say according to Quran and Sunnah, they're not even our leaders. According, according to Quran and Sunnah, that were they chosen as our leaders according to Quran and Sunnah? Were they chosen? Were, did they establish the Sharia? So how are they our Muslim? On what basis are they our Muslim leaders? Muslim leaders, they're Muslim leaders. Of course, they're leaders of Muslims. You know, that's just de facto. But they're not leaders of Islam and so when the Prophet said don't do khuruj it was in the context of within within the shade of Islam within Darul Islam within the land of Islam but today we have not one inch in the world where there's Islam not two inch in the world where there's Islam all around the world everyone's using paper money paper money which is just interest Paper money is not real money. I don't want to go into that subject right now. <clears throat> okay, inshallah, I'll end here and uh, we'll see whatever Allah decides. Inshallah, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.